Hey, welcome to KiwiTech, and today we are looking at extending the review I did on Carbon ROM. I didn't talk about the kernel and the overclocking features that he has, because I wanted to sort of do that in one particular video. Okay, so let's go right down and take a look at our device. I'm running his Beta 2, which has been released a couple of days ago, and this is running his own kernel, which has overclocking capabilities. So just to clarify, this is Carbon ROM version 2, Beta 2 that is, and to get into the overclocking settings, we need to go into Performance, and then click on the OK button, and we can see we've got Processor, I.O. Scheduler, Memory Management, and 16-bit Transparency. So the first one, Processor. From inside here, we can see we've got the current CPU frequency, the CPU governor, the minimum, the maximum, and for setting on boot. Clicking on maximum CPU frequency, you can see we can boost this right up to 2342 MHz. And you can see if I click on governor and change it to performance, you can see my tool at the top, which is called cool tool, is registering my frequency at the peak, which is what I created before. Now, obviously, if I keep it at performance, it's going to be bursting at that top CPU frequency the whole time, which is probably not going to be very good. I might get a bit of heat in there and probably a bit of rebooting and instability too. So if I change my governor back to Lionheart, which is probably the best one, it allows your device to use a peak frequency that you set it, but it's only going to hit those high frequencies, that peak frequency, every now and then, every time your device thinks it needs to, every time it's running some core processes. Okay, you can see I'm in IO Scheduler now, and I've selected Row. And what that means is read over write. So for our handheld devices, um, that's more important. Being able to read files and data from your SD card is more important than writing files to your SD card. We need preference, or we need that priority of reading over writing. That's why I've selected ROW. Okay, now with inside memory management, we can see we've got ZRAM. Now on devices like the Xperia Z Ultra, ZRAM is put kind of unnecessary. It's for usually for devices that have a lot less RAM than what we've got. So essentially ZRAM is like a swap file or a, a virtual memory file. So for me, I've disabled that. Right, so what I've done is set my maximum CPU frequency to 2342 megahertz. And what I'm going to do now is run a test and see, actually you can see at the top now, moving home screens and having that transition between the home screens is peaking my CPU frequency right at the top. What I'm going to do is run that AIM22 benchmark and I'm going to run a stability test to see how it stacks up. I'm only going to run it for probably about 2 or 3 minutes just to check to see if it is stable. I'm not going to run it for the full hour, that's just a waste of time. I'm never going to have my device running at peak frequency for over a few seconds anyway. So that worked fine, I'm now going to run a full benchmark test and see how it compares against other devices. Let me just fast forward these tests. So you can see we have a score of 32,446 and the HTC One is under 30,000, so that's pretty good going. Right, so it's stable, I've run a benchmark test, so the next thing I need to do is go back into the ROM's performance tab, then click on processor and then click the dialog box or the tick box that says set on boot and then I'm good to go, I can reboot my device and now it's overclocked forever or until I reflash into the ROM. Anyway, so this has been KiwiTech, thanks for watching. Be sure to navigate to the description of the video and check out Crabapple's thread to his carbon ROM for the Xperia Z Ultra. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.